Hey guys, in this lesson we will talk about connecting link, embryological evidence of evolution and biogenetic law from the topic evolution. This is presented by me Yogita Khandelwal. Connecting or missing link. Species possessing characters of two separate taxonomic groups, one advanced and the other primitive and thus acting as bridge between the two taxonomic groups are known as connecting link. So basically what happens, uh, a species that is in between a primitive and advanced gr taxonomic group and have characters of both the groups, thus connects the two taxonomic groups that is advanced one and primitive one and thus known as connecting link. Missing link. Fossil connecting link. So, if a connecting link is a fossil, then it is known as missing link. So, uh, it is a good ex evidence of organic evolution and common ancestry. So, uh, first connecting link, virus. So, it is a connecting link between living and non-living. So, uh, non-living is a primitive group. Living is advanced one and the virus have characters of both the groups. So, it is a connecting link of living and non-living. Second is euglena. It is between plants and animals. Next is proterospongia between protozoa and porifera. Neopylina, it is a living fossil and it is connecting link between annelida and mollusca. Peripatus, it is also a living fossil and it is connecting link between annelida and arthropoda. Now, see here. Mollusca and Arthropoda have common ancestors that is Anilida. Balanoglossus, it is a hemichordate and it is a connecting link between non-chordates and chordates. Chimera, it is also known as a ghost fish, rabbit fish and various other names. And it is connecting link between cartilaginous and bony fishes. Lung fish or Latimeria, it is connecting link between Pisces, that is fishes and amphibians. Next is Phenodon, also known as Tuatara. And it is connecting link between reptiles and amphibia. And it is a missing link. That is, it is a fossil connecting link. Archaeopteryx, uh, it is a very common name. Because uh, it is fossilized. And it is connecting link between reptiles and apes. That it has a characters of both reptiles as well as birds. Synapsida, mammal-like reptile. So, it is a reptile which is mammal-like. So, it is a connecting link between reptiles and mammals and it is a missing link that it is a fossil. Echidna, it is reptile-like mammal. It is mammal which is rep resembles with reptile. And it is a connecting link between reptiles and mammals. And it is a living fossil. Embryological evidences of evolution. So, for embryological ev evidences of evolution, we have two laws. First is Von Baer law. And second is the biogenetic law. So, first starting with Von Baer law. It is based on comparative analysis of vertebrate embryonic development. So, Von Baer analyzed the vertebrate uh, embryonic development and he observed. So, the observation, vertebrate showing common ancestry shows close resemblance during embryonic development with respect to formation of brain, spinal cord, vertebral column, etc. So, vertebrates which have common ancestors, so they have close resemblance in general characteristics during embryonic development like brain, etc., but they differ in advanced stage of embryonic development by formation of specialized structure. Example is beaks in birds and body hairs in mammals. So, uh, they have a close resemblance with uh, general characteristics, but they differ in advanced stage with specialized characteristics such as beaks, that, that is specialization of birds and body hairs, which is a characteristic of mammals. Conclusion. So, based on these observations, he concluded in embryo, firstly, general characters appear, then the specialized characters. So, general characters are followed by specialized characters 
and no embryonic developmental stage resembles with any of the living ancestral adult stage so it stay uh, it uh, says that uh, embryonic developmental stage do, do not resemble completely with any of the living ancestral adult stage now second is biogenetic law or recapitulation theory it was firstly proposed by muller and he named it as recapitulation theory and in detail by ernst haeckel so ernst haeckel uh, studied in detail and he named this law as biogenetic law it states that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny ontogeny means embryonic development recapitulates that is repeat phylogeny that is evolutionary history so embryonic development repeats evolutionary history that is organism shows its ancestral adult stage during its embryonic development so uh, the or uh, embryo uh, the embryo uh, resembles with the ancestral adult stage and it contradicts with bears law which states that there is a no embryonic developmental stage that completely resembles with any of the ancestral adult stage now examples in support of biogenetic law amocyte larva of petromyzon or lamprey so these two uh, this petromyzon belongs to class cyclostomata resembles with adult amphioxus or bron bron branchiostoma that is belongs to class cephalochordata to so, amocyte larva resembles with adult amphioxus next is tadpole of amphibia resembles with fishes so tadpole uh, resembles more with fishes and it it vary with the adult frog sapling of acacia bears simple leaves resembling ancestral plant while mature acacia have compound leaves so when it is sapling acacia bears simple leaves while mature acacia bears compound leaves and this simple leaf characteristic resembles with the ancestral plant and the northern usa mature oak tree is deciduous and its sapling is non deciduous resembling with southern usa mature oak tree so a uh, northern when usa oak tree when mature is deciduous while sapling is non deciduous that resembles southern usa mature oak tree which proves that northern uh, so the new usa mature oak tree is the ancestor of northern usa oak tree so that's all for this lesson thanks for watching